Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. Today the road brings me to Midgeville, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I mean, Georgia, this was once the largest mental asylum in the world. It is abandoned now. There are a few buildings that are still being used, but a lot of the homes and buildings are abandoned, and we're just gonna ride around, walk around, and take a look. From what I've seen so far, it's pretty spooky, and I think you enjoy it. But we'll get started right after this station identification. In 1967, Governor Ronald Reagan signed the Landerman Petrus Short Act, all but ending the practice of institutionalizing patients against their will. In the decades to follow, all across the United States, mental institutions began shutting down, and thus, without the proper institutions for treatments, domestic violence and crime has begun to rise. This building was designed to look like the Capitol. This asylum was known as Central State Hospital also, was once the world's largest mental institution. Well, I got stopped by the security guard and she told me it was off limits that they did not do tours here or let people in because the building was in such bad shape. This was known as the Powell Building. But as I said, this was once the largest mental institution in the world. And you can see, and I'm gonna ride around a little bit, buildings all down through there, as well as all over there and they all are abandoned. So let's hop in the truck and uh, ride around, just see what we can see. And the back side of it, it's hard to tell from here, and I don't think my camera can zoom in, but that building there is a balcony, but they're covered in thick, heavy wire. All these buildings were a part of the hospital. Some of them have been repurposed for other things. That was the Lawrence building. I'm not sure what the purpose of the Lawrence building was. It is massive. But check out the architecture on that building. That is nice. This, this is the Georgia Old Capital Heritage Center at the depot, they say. The security guard told me, but it was never open. There are homes. I guess were maybe employees that worked at the hospital lived. A lot of these are as abandoned as well. Just, just left alone to decay. You definitely get a feeling that something supernatural happened here and the people just left.
That is really wild. This was the Quarterstone Auditorium building. The Georgia Lunatic Asylum was the fifth oldest institution exclusively for the insane in the South and the 14th in the nation. It took care of afflicted paupers in Georgia as well as others from Georgia and elsewhere who could pay $100 a year to cover clothing, room and board and medical care. The female convalescent center was erected in 1883. The building once mirrored the Walker building, the building directly across the pecan grove from this building. And the Walker building would have been through there. The back portion of this building was torn down and a modern auditorium was erected in 1949. This front portion was saved because it has a cornerstone with the graduations and staff training and can be rented out for community events. And that is the more modern building that was built for the auditorium. And of course, there is the cornerstone right there. And that's about as close as I'm gonna get because I've already been warned. And I'm not sure, but if there's such thing as hauntings, this would be the place they would be. And I believe the chapel is still in use and it appears to be in very good shape and upkept. This is the green building. It was used to house the white convalescent patients who suffer from conditions such as schizophrenia. The patients were likely to never leave. In the late 1970 and early 80s, it was reopened and given to Baldwin County. It was last used by the Department of Children and Family Services, Head Start, and for gifted students and adult literacy. And this is what it looked like. And that's the back side of the green building. This is the Walker building. It was originally, the Walker building was originally called the Mail Convalescent Building. It was built in 1884 and opened for use in 1886. The Walker Building served as an admission ward for white males. This building was faithfully used to treat patients until its closing in 1974. I actually thought I was about over, but I believe this is a Georgia Department of Corrections. This was the Scott State Prison. I believe it is abandoned as well. It is easy to understand why this was once the largest mental hospital in the world. 
I'm just panning around and you can see way off in the distance. It goes on and on. And then there's prisons that's connected with it, such as this one, another abandoned prison. It says River, Rivers North Prison. Oh, I'd love to be able to explore in there, but it's private property. We are now, I'm now entering the Cedar Lane Cemetery. There had been patients at the hospital that was buried all over the place. A lot of patients that died under care at the state hospital, they just kind of threw them away. All these iron markers, and you'll see there are a lot of them, and there's numbers on them. These iron markers are here to remember some of those patients. And they have discovered graves all down through the woods. And this is Cedar Lane. Well, that was pretty creepy. And that is going to do it for our trip to the Georgia State Mental Hospital. This place is huge. I sure wish I could go in some of the buildings. But, as I've said before, I'm not going to jail for a video. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big old thumbs up. Be sure to share with your family and friends. But until next time, y'all have a good day.